My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. If they say, Come with us, let us lay wait for blood. Let us lure privily for the innocent without cause. Let us wallow them up, alive as the grave, and whole as those that go down into the pit. We shall find all precious substance. We shall fill our houses with spoil. Cast in thy lot among us. Let us all have one purse. My son, walk not thou in the way with them. Refrain thy foot from their path, for their feet run to evil, and make haste to shed blood. Surely in vain the net is spread in the sight of any bird, and they lay wait for their own blood. They lurk privately for their own leaves. So are the ways of every one that is greedy of gain, which taketh away the life of the owners thereof. Here we have the first sample of an actual teaching which follows the opening introduction to the book. The first teaching is for a son, and since it's the it's this type of teaching which the New Testament Christian has forgotten. See Hebrews chapter 12 verse 5. He should remember that he himself is a son, John chapter 1 verse 12, and the writer of Hebrew is quoting the Proverbs. See Proverbs chapter 3 verses 11 to 12. The first warning is against bad company. The New Testament version of this is found in Ephesians chapter 5 verses 1 to 16. And when Paul says, evil communications corrupt good manners, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 33, he is repeating the wisdom of Solomon. Separation is the first law of wisdom. Non-cooperation is the second law. And non-participation is the third. See verse 10 and 15. That is, biblical wisdom begins and ends with a different approach than that which is recommended by science, religion, psychology, and education. Togetherness is only desirable when the Bible is honored, respected, preached, practiced, believed, and obeyed. Any other type of togetherness, so-called, is Babel, Genesis chapter 11, repeated with a little topping of ecumenical whipped cream. The bad company of verses 10 to, 10 to 19 is composed of murderers, verse 11 and 19, and thieves, verse 12, 13 and 19, and lest the gullible commentator or theologian make the mistake of thinking that the reference is only to the mafia, second story men, safe crackers, pickpockets, thugs, junkies, and professional killers, let him remember that one of the twelve apostles was a thief, and the religious council of Christ's day was composed of murderers. See Acts chapter 7, verse 52. The husbandman who killed the son to get his inter inheritance, Matthew chapter 21, verses 30-38, were first-class murderers and thieves, even though they didn't leave positions of leadership in the synagogue to accomplish their work. The reader will notice the appearance of the word sinner, if sinners entice thee. In the Old Testament, the word is always used of people of extremely bad character and evil reputation. Luke chapter 7, verse 37, John chapter 9, verse 24. This is quite unlike the Pauline usage in the New Testament, which states that there is no difference, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans chapter 3, verses 22 and 23. The expression publicans and sinners, Luke chapter 15, verse 1, found so often in the New Testament Gospels, is an expression which always occurs before Calvary and before the Pauline revelation. Paul claims to be chiefest of sinners, 1 Timothy chapter 5, 1, verse 15, and he certainly wasn't the type of sinner referred to by the Old, the Old Testament passages. See Numbers chapter 16, verse 38, and Genesis chapter 13, verse 13, etc. If they say what follows is an invitation to join a group engaged in killing people to get their property, or at least their valuables. The corrupt Septuagint has substituted 
and let us remove his memory from the earth. At the end of verse 12, for as those that go down into the pit. The substitution as men of good will for good will to men, to men in Luke chapter 2 verse 14 is quite typical of the scholarship that went into the invention of the Revised Standard Version 1952 and the Authorized Standard Version 191 and similar so-called Bibles. The passage under consideration also points out one of the main tactics used by Satan in working through the unregenerate mind. You can get something for nothing, so-called. Verse 16 has been deleted in the corrupt documents used by Westcott and Hort, authorized standard version 1901 and revised standard version 1952. Although A. Alexandrinus follows the correct King James text in this passage. Again, the corrupt Septuagint Vaticanus and Sinaiticus has meddled with the text, placing a private interpretation on verse 17, which has nothing to do with the text. The corrupt scribe Origen, or perhaps Eusebius, or both, has ignored verse 18, which interprets verse 17. The Septuagint corruption preserved in Vaticanus and similar unreliable manuscripts, the Hesychian type, has the nonsensical reading, for not unreasonably is the net spread before birds. The idea here being that even though the birds see the net being spread, they still run into it. In the light of verse 18, this reading is nonsense, and the fact, fact that Nestle and Westcott and Hort recommended this ridiculous manuscript as the authoritative New Testament text. Vaticanus contains the Old and New Testament in Greek. It's only a Christian argument for rejecting the opinions of Westcott and Hort and Nestle as little more than childish fancies. The meaning is obviously that a man who spreads a net for someone who knows about it ahead of time is spreading it for himself, not the other man. That this is the correct interpretation is perfectly obvious from what follows, and they lay wait for their own blood. Verse 18. The bird of verse 17 doesn't lay in wait or lurk for anyone's life. The meaning is plain, the interpretation is clear, the application is simple, and the Septuagint is always is in error. Wisdom cried without, she uttered her voice in the streets. She cried in the chief place of concourse. In the openings of the gates in the city, she uttered her vo words, saying, How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. Now wisdom is personified as elsewhere, chapter 8, verse 2, and chapter 9, verse 1, etc., the feminine gender is used. Wisdom is a woman who stands in contrast to the Babylonian harlot. Chapter 5, verse 3, chapter 7, verse 9, chapter 9, verse 13, and chapter 6, verse 24. The wise man is told to obtain wisdom, exalt her, love her, and forsake her not. Chapter 4, verses 5 to 8. The Greeks who seek wisdom, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22, would therefore be intensely interested in the wisdom books of the Bible, Job to Ecclesiastes, and there is little doubt that whatever wisdom Socrates 470 before Christ, Plato 427 before Christ, and Aristotle 384 before Christ, had they plagiarized from the Old Testament while eliminating much of the moral content and ethical standards of the law. Christ identifies himself, himself with the true wisdom, Luke chapter 11, verse 49. And Paul tells the Christian that Jesus Christ is wisdom itself, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30, Colossians chapter 2, verse 3. This means that contemporary ed education will be occupied with Greek wisdom, so-called watered-down philosophy, while the true Bible believer will be occupied 
with the risen Savior and the infallible revelation of his word. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 16 to 17. There are five places where wisdom calls for he hearing. First, without, outside the city in the fields, Hebrews chapter 13, verses 10 to 14. Second, in the openings of the gates, where the town elders may, met. Third, in the streets, to anyone who will listen. Fourth, in the chief place of concourse, the big modern intersection found at junctions of freeways, avenues, boulevards, etc. Fifth, in the city, the downtown district where the marketplace is found, Matthew chapter 11, verse 16. It's apparent that a man can find wisdom if he is really out looking for her. However, it's equally apparent that most people are looking for jobs, income, pleasure, sex, money, fame, popularity, recognition, decrease, and causes. Wisdom addresses simple ones, scorners, and fools, like those found in Psalm chapter 1. The words are chosen for the cumulative force. Simple ones are merely careless or indifferent people who never investigate anything too roughly to judge its true moral value. Scorners are those who turn up their nose at purity, chastity, integrity, principle, and holiness, while fools carry out their anti-biblical and anti-God philosophies in daily living and actively oppose righteousness and holiness. The simple here are those described also in chapter 7, verse 7, chapter 14, verse 15, and chapter 22, verse 3 and are not like the simple of Psalm chapter 119, verse 130, and Romans chapter 16, verse 19. There is a simplicity, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 12, which is plain and godly guilelessness. And there is a simpleton who is willfully ignorant of righteousness and doesn't give two hoots in hell whether he ever finds out anything about it or not. This Ladder is the simple one of Proverbs to 1 verse 22. Cast in thy lot should need little explanation. The lot referred here is a goral, Hebrew, which is a little stone or pebble. The placing of this stone in another group of stones makes it one of the same lot and thus indicates that the one who so places it agrees with those who have already put their lots in the group. The scorners, verse 22, get a special pleasure out of making fun of the wisdom of God. It's a kind of recreation with them. See Proverbs chapter 19, verse 28, Second Chronicles chapter 30, verse 10, Proverbs chapter 15, verse 12, chapter 19, verse 19, chapter 21, verse 24, chapter 24, verse 9, etc. The word scoffers, which has been inserted into the text by many of the new translations is not the correct word here for the scoffer see second peter chapter 3 verse 3 is one who reacts to a bible truth with a light or jesting manner scorners is a stronger word and indicates that the scorner makes fun of the truth and really ridiculous it vehemently einstein wells omar Kaim, george bernard shaw Mark Twain and Van Doren are examples of scoffers. Voltaire, Tom Paine, Celsus, Miller Burroughs, Harry Emerson, Fosdick, Propfiri and Timothy O'Leary are examples of scorners. Neither type of man is recommended by the Bible regardless of their faith or profession. Turn you at my reproof, I will make known my words unto you. Some people didn't like the expression, I will make known my words, because this implies that the words of God can be made known to anyone who is not classified as a scorner, simpleton, or a fool. So the text has been changed to, I will utter my mind to you. Delitz and Bengel agrees with the, this reading, which of course is quite typical of the private interpretation of many commentators.
all of these men resent the words being inspired, John chapter 6 verse 63, and being plain, Proverbs chapter 8 verse 8. The serious Bible student hasn't failed to notice the insertion of I will pour out my spirit unto you before I will make known. This strongly emphasize, emphasizes the New Testament doctrine that those who haven't the spirit, Jude 19, cannot understand the words. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse is 19 to 25. No matter how many resources they have to original languages, so-called, and so-called better manuscripts, etc. The Septuagint typically corrupt reads, I will teach you my word, thus upholding the traditional neo-Orthodox view that it's the message, so-called, of the Bible, which is inspired, not the words. Three outstanding New Testament doctrines are found in Proverbs chapter 1 verse 23. A. Repentance precedes conversion. Turn you. B. Conversion precedes the giving of the Holy Spirit. C. The Holy Spirit must indwell the believer, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13, before he can know the words of the Bible. What follows, verses 24 to 33, is plainly the result of a man rejecting the call to repentance and conversion and trying to make it on his own with the aid of sacraments, religious religions, lexicons, scientific advance, advancements, and similar trivia. So believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Repentance, conversion, giving of the Holy Spirit, and then the Holy Spirit must indwell the believer, and then he can know the words of the Bible. Let it be so. Amen.